guys, you get a two-armed wave from me this week because it's the sixth week of quarantine and things are getting a little crazy around here. I hope you guys are all doing well. If you're stuck or safe inside, I hope that you aren't getting too stir crazy. I have already done a video. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out here about all the things that France does so much better than the US. So I felt like it was only fair to do this video today about the things that I think the US does really better than France. Now, I tried to find some pretty obscure ones so that it's maybe things you've never heard of. So you'll have to let me know in the comments below if you were surprised by anything. I saved my absolute favorite for number 10, which is the last one, so try to stick with me until the end. And otherwise, please don't forget to like the video and of course subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet. And c'est parti. All right, I don't even own a car in France, but I still miss drive-throughs. Drive-throughs are such a great invention. And in the US, we have drive-throughs for a lot of stuff, not just fast food. We have them for pharmacies, we have them for banks, we have them for grocery stores, for liquor stores, um, of course, for fast food. Um, there's a lot of places that have drive-throughs. And I really, especially as some of you know, I'm a new mom, and I now really understand the convenience of being able to not get out of the car when you've got a sleeping baby and be able to run a couple of errands. And in France, there's really not that many drive throughs I think I've only been to a drive through at McDonald's. So you'll have to let me know in the comments below if you think there are a lot more, but after 10 years, I've hardly ever used a drive through in France when I do have a car. So I feel like that's something that we could change a little bit over there. But fun fact, there are some cities in the US that are starting to ban new establishments that have drive throughs because they're saying that when someone's like grabbing their groceries, they're kind of distracted as they pull away from the drive-thru and it's really not safe for pedestrians. So maybe we're moving more into like a no drive through type of life later on, but I do find these to be really convenient and I miss them. If you've seen any of my videos, you probably have noticed that I mentioned at least once in a my video how much I love the healthcare in France. So I'm a huge fan, but there's one thing that the US does way better than France and it has to do with your prescriptions. So in the US, when you go to the doctor and they prescribe medication, they ask you the pharmacy that you'll be picking your medication up and then they send electronically the prescription to the pharmacy. So then you just have to drive over there and give your name and your insurance and, and your ID card and they give you the medication. In France, you actually, the doctor gives you yourself the prescription and you have to keep this paper. You cannot lose it because you take it to the pharmacy to pick up the medication. If you need any refills, you need it to go back to get your refills. And I'm sorry, but it is just a pain in the ass. I'm always like, wait, why do I have to hold it? Can't you just like send it directly to the pharmacy? I lose things all the time and it's such a pain to lose a prescription that you need to refill. High school experience in the US is such a legend for I think a lot of people in the world, not just the French. Um, and if you've seen any of the movies like Mean Girls, I can tell you that some of this stuff is true and some of it for me is a bit of an exaggeration. But one thing we don't exaggerate is sports. Sports at a high school is really big because you've got the people who are actually playing the sports, you've got the entire school that comes and supports them, you've got the cheerleaders, you've got the mascots. It's like this whole community of people that's all supporting your school. And honestly, it's such a good memory and was so much a part of my life when I was in high school, just school sports. And even I played on a high school volleyball team and I just have so many great memories of the entire school coming to support us at big matches. And in France, you don't have school teams, like sport teams linked to your school. Often sports or extracurricular activities are at private clubs. So it's not that there aren't people there supporting you, it's just that it's not necessarily linked to your high school or your middle school. And I think that's something that's really missing in France. It brings up such a great school spirit and everybody being together. And I think you're kind of missing out on that one. Just the entertainment industry in the US is really incredible. When you think of some of the biggest like worldwide global success films like E.T. and Avatar and Titanic, they came from the States. If you think about the music industry, five of the top 10 global artists in 2019 were American. I don't know, you think of Netflix, which is my lifeline right now in quarantine, or if you think of some of these great TV shows that had like real global success like Friends or, or Sex in the City, you know, they came from the States. I don't think that the films or the TV shows are necessarily so much better in the US than in France, 
but we've definitely created a media industry over there that's easier to export or has more success worldwide on a global scale. And while France definitely has its own industries that make a mark on the global map, I would have to say that the US wins for entertainment. The next three all have to deal with driving. The first thing just being getting your license. So when I was a student, actual driver's education was a curriculum. It was part of my classes at school. Now I went to a public school. If you went to a private school in the US when I was a student, then you did have to go to a private company to get your driver's license and it cost about $300. But for me, it was completely free. I went to like one of my classes was driver's ed. I went for two months. I took the written exam at school. I had teachers at school after school who taught me how to drive. And then I went to the DMV to get my license and pass my driver's test and it was all free everything um, in France when my husband got his driver's license like 10 years ago he spent about 2,000 euros that was about the average price I think then to get his license I know things have changed in France now and it's a little bit less expensive it's more I think on average around 1200 euros to get your license but that's still a lot of money compared to the US and it's not offered with school so whether or not you have a very fancy car, or in my case, not so very fancy. I drove around my mom's old light green minivan, but it worked, so that was great. And I could safely and legally fit six of my closest friends in the back, so holla. Then you got to get your license plate. And in the US, this was so fun because we can actually personalize our license plates. So I had a friend whose last name was Gordon, so her license was G Baby. Um, I don't know, you see all kinds of crazy ones. You see like Jesus or Be Positive. You can have motivational ones. You can have mascots, so I would see like Hawkeyes. Um, honestly, I mean, as long as no one else has chose what you want and you kind of follow the rules, you get to personalize. And in France, it's not necessarily the case. The only real like personalization is when you say the region, the department you come from, and they choose the number that, that like goes with your department. But I mean, the license plates are just boring. So it's not as fun to be on a road trip in France and be on the lookout for license plates. And finally, something pretty genius that I think in the US is the fact that you can turn right on red. So in the US, if you're at a stoplight waiting and you're in the right hand lane and you're gonna turn right, as long as there's no traffic coming from the left, you have the right to go if there's not a sign whenever you want. So you're not really blocking traffic on the right, which I think is really cool. And you can't do this in France. So if anybody is planning a European road trip, keep this in mind. I find there's a lot more pressure in France to know what you want to do as a job when you're an adult at a very young age. In the US, it's really common for kids to go to university and they don't know what they want to do. Their major is undefined for two years, they test classes, um, they try out new things, and then by the time that they're, you know, 2021, 20, they need to decide where they want to specialize in. In France, it feels like this happens much earlier, more when you're in high school and you're choosing specific tracks to focus on that will bring a specific exam at the end of your high school that then takes you to a specific track in university. It's all very linked to what you did in high school. And I find that there's way less flexibility in France to change once you've you know, gotten to university or once you've graduated to then go into a different path. It doesn't happen as often in the US. And I think it's just too much pressure on kids at a young age. If you've never heard of Costco or Sam's Club, you are missing out. So in the US, we have these stores that sell um, items in bulk, so in very large quantities. So the idea is you pay a membership fee, so like $100 for the year, and then you're able to go into the store and for example, you can buy 50 yogurts for the price of 20 that you would normally get at your Carrefour um, or your Auchan down the street. And it's really great when you're a family because you're able to save a lot of money by buying in bulk. Now, this would be really hard in Paris where we have really small apartments and so where would you store the extra food? But for all the rest of France or people not living in big cities, I feel like this would be amazing. So my, my final one and my favorite one is cash bag. So in the US, when you go and you buy something, whether it's like groceries or you're buying clothes, um, the cashier rings you up and then she says, do you want any cash back? And you'll say, yeah, give me 20 bucks or give me $50. And she'll add that to the amount that you owe. And then you pay with your card and she gives you back the amount that you asked for cash back. 
It's magic, guys. So you don't have to run to the ATM or the bank to pick up cash. And I feel like this would be so amazing in France because we often need cash in France. There's so many places that say like, if you don't you know, spend 10 euros or if you don't spend 15 euros, we don't take a card. I don't see this a lot in the US, but in France all the time. So I visit the ATM pretty regularly to make sure I have like change for the bread or stuff. So I feel like cash back would be an amazing thing to implement into France. So. Just an idea, guys. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed my video on all of the things that I think the US does better than France. I can't wait to hear in the comments below what you guys think. Let me know if you don't agree or if you have other things you would have added that I didn't add. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to like the video. And otherwise, I'll see everybody next Wednesday. Bisous.